Hello! Ooh, Sony's come out with a new toy. Would you like to see it? I do hope so, because that's entirely what this video is about. Plomp. Here it is, the PS Vita. Or Svita, as they've written on the box. Yes, this is a follow-up to Sony's mighty PlayStation Portable, the PSP, which was a funny old machine. You always got the idea that Sony didn't quite get the idea of handheld gaming and instead just sort of ported a load of PS2 games onto a thing you hold in front of your face. And it all felt a bit, I don't know, pointless really. But then they hacked it and you could put emulators on and play old games on the train. I enjoyed all that. I'm old. Right, anyway, PS Vita, it's the new one. PlayStation Vita. 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 Not a really fantastic name. Sounds a bit like a woman's clothes shop. Um, don't know why they've done away with their old naming conventions and gone for sort of Latin. Vita, of course, being a Latin phrase meaning a meaningless and pretentious name. Right, box. Sony. Crystal Black. PCH1003. Meaningless serial number. I say meaningless now. Do you think that will become very meaningful to people trying to hack the firmware later? Who knows? It's early days. This is the Wi-Fi model. There is also a 3G model available, which enables you to do uh, some stuff on the internet, as long as you don't mind giving every penny you will ever earn in your life to a mobile phone company. Also, from my current understanding, the 3G is a bit restricted. You can't play uh, sort of big-time games over it and can only do a little bit of downloading. So it seems a little bit pointless. But hey, what do I know? I was too mean to buy one. Right, other box with picture of the unit, which looks very PSP but with extra knobs. <laughs> and look, it's safe for children three and up. That's a bit bizarre. And also, gameplay may require PS Vita memory card. Hooray for hidden costs. We'll get onto that later. Um, back of the box is just gumpf. Take full control with dual analog sticks, multi touch screen, and rear touchpad. Basically, we've plastered touch screens all over it because we love them. Stay connected, play and chat with friends, and find new challenges wherever you are. Some sort of social thing that nobody in their right mind will care about. Superior gaming. Enjoy incredible gameplay experiences on the stunning 5-inch OLED screen. Now that's more like it. To play games, a PlayStation Vita card, a memory card for the PS Vita system, or both is needed. Hang on, let's run that thing. A PlayStation Vita card, a memory card for the PS Vita system, or both. What? What's the difference? What's a PlayStation Vita card? And is, is that... what? Is that a game? Is that, does that mean that's a game? Oh, you've confused me with the back of your box, Sony, and now I hate you. Um, PlayStation Store and PlayStation Network available in many countries, all of which have been reduced to two letters. Ooh, I've never seen that before. It looks like somebody uh, swearing really quickly in Polish, doesn't it? Mm. Polish people now watching are going, hmm, and turning off. Sorry. PlayStation Network only, available in other countries. PlayStation blah, 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 blah. Not interested. Warning, if you have a history of epilepsy or seizures, don't shove this up your nose. Actually, don't shove this up your nose. Anyway, it won't help. This product is intended for ages 6 and up, and yet it's safe for 2 and up, and it's region 2. Ugh, region coding. Why not just punch us in the balls straight away, bloody media companies? This product allows you to restrict gameplay and access to the internet by children. Ooh, apparently enforced by the Lego police. Looking at that badge. Right, EU plays a... Oh, who cares? Let's see what's in the box. There's nothing more tedious than reading stuff off the back of a box. Audience nods head. Welcome to the world of PlayStation! Why, thank you. Here's a quick start guide. That's nifty. Can I get it out? I did before. Oh, wow! <laughs> Hours of fun already! This thing's brilliant! Right, get rid of that. Um, what have we got? Cards. Oh yes, AR play cards. Play cards pour reality augmente. That's the uh, augmented reality play cards then. You'll need these to live. Slightly frightening. Um, basically these are very similar to those ones you get with the 3DS. Like, dangerously similar, just larger, slightly more nicely made, and very blandly coloured. Let's put them to one side, maybe they'll come in useful later. Can't say I'm drunk enough to care at this stage. Right, you've got some sort of USB charger thing, which is a big chunky unit. And basically plugs into the mains and gives you a USB port to charge from. Not exactly rocket science. Also, a nice standard USB cable of which we all have many types. Oh, hang on, I'm lying through my teeth. It's another one of Sony's bloody proprietary connections. USB on this end, that thing on the other end. Brilliant. Thanks, lad. So now we can't charge it with anything else we own. If you lose it, you have to go and buy another one for immense cost. Cheers, lads. Really appreciate that. Also, there's some guff. It's probably got words written on. Oh, some more. 
guff in here. Actually, what's the like about PlayStation Store? Go on, on right now to download the latest games, apps, movies, demos, and trailers from PlayStation Store. Near. Uh, discover PlayStation Network friends and players in your local area. Share gifts and find out which games are hot wherever you go. Which games are hot, dearie me, people. Um, hmm, that's basically Nintendo Street Pass, isn't it? Only looking slightly different. And Live Area. Access all the latest game updates and news and check out all your friends' status updates. Oh, no. Right, so what have we seen so far? Um, they're sticking on capacitive touchscreens like the iPhone. Um, they've got a load of systems similar to the 3DS. And now apparently they're looking into sort of social gaming and the whole Facebook thing. Way to cover all angles, lads. Anyway, here's the unit. At least I hope it is or I've been really ripped off in the shop. And what's it like? Answer, hmm, slightly lovely. For starters, it's a lot thinner and lighter than you have any right to expect. And the whole thing, of course, feels very high quality and lovely. What are the parts of it? D-pad. Good D-pad. Feels good in the hand. Moves nicely. We like it. Analog sticks. Two of them. Yes, people have been crying out for that for years. You can't push them in to go click for another button, but act very nicely as indeed they should. And yes, they are at least 40 million times better than those grotesque analog nubs they used on the original PSP, which I hated with a passion. And yet nobody complained about it at the time of its release, and yet now everybody's like, oh, they're horrible. Why didn't you say so at the time? I hate you all. PlayStation button to go back to the start and all that kind of guff. Um, select and start buttons, of course. Uh, what else we got? Ooh, some buttons. That's rather useful for when you play games, isn't it? Hint, hint, Apple. Um, I don't like these at all, to be brutally honest with you. Uh, they're all very slightly too small for me. I have quite big hands, you see, and as a result, these gave me quite nasty thumb cramp after a particularly short period of time, like about 20 minutes, because I have to kind of move my thumb quite dramatically in order to press one without pressing another one. So that was a bit bad for me. What have we got here? Oh look, a camera that points towards your face. It's very low quality, nobody cares. Speaker holes! Things on here to look flashy. I can't imagine anybody would actually attach a lanyard to one of these. They're far too expensive. You've got shoulder buttons, which aren't very really nice actually. They feel a bit cheapy um, due to the plastic. And also, I don't know if you can hear this, you get a sort of nasty uh, plastic on plastic squeaky whine when you press them. Less than impressed with that bit. What have we got on the top? Can't see because it's not focusing. Come on. There we are. Well done. You get a biscuit. Power button, always useful. Slot to put in the Vita games. Also, if I can remember how to actually open this, there we are. Ooh, these things feel a bit flimsy, I must admit. There's also an LED that flashes to tell you um, what's going on, but it's usually covered up. Very, very odd. I wonder why they did that. In here, you've got some sort of random accessory connector thing. I don't think they've actually made anything that connects to it yet. Volume, minus and plus, that's always nice. On the back. Um, well, nothing except the camera. Oh wait, and another capacitive touch screen, which is all a bit odd, really. New idea, you can move your fingers around on the back and manoeuvre around things on the screen without having to sort of... Ooh, it's all a bit strange. I found it very difficult to get used to in games, and actually it really messed me up for a while because I generally hold it with my fingers kind of on the back here like that. And you can't do that if it's using the back touchscreens. It thinks you're wanting it to do things. So you have to kind of hold it like that. And that probably didn't help my thumbs, actually. On the bottom here, we have headphone. We have a chargey, connectory, USB parts, proprietary evil thing. And, of course, somewhere to plug your memory cards into. Let's get on to that in a second. Something I would like to point out. This wouldn't charge at first. I couldn't work out why. Tell you for why. You see how this plugs in? Simple, innit? Oh wait, you can plug it in upside down. That's stupid design. Why would you have something you could plug in upside down by accident? It's not exactly a feat of engineering to make it not symmetrical. Bloody idiots. Anyway, it fits in easier that way and it's got the logo to the front so you've got no excuse for being stupid like I was. But still, come on people, it's not a difficult design decision. Okay, let's talk about this thing, shall we? Yes, it's got no onboard storage, which is kind of understandable because it helps them keep the cost of the unit down in the first place, and it means you can, you know, swap things out and, oh no, it's all full up, don't worry, just put in another card. And hey, it's not a problem because Sony already have their own proprietary memory card system, don't they? Yeah, pity they didn't use it, really. Yes, to use the PS Vita, you have to buy, wait for it, 
proper special memory cards that only work in this and with nothing else ever. That's nice, isn't it? Even the camera doesn't want to focus on it, it's so appalled. Oh, it is now. That's right, ruined my joke. Um, and just for reference, here is a Sony Mem M2 memory stick. Yeah, you can see why they had to make another one, because, you know, it's such a radical new design. Oh, bloody swines, aren't they? Sony and their proprietary formats, I don't know. And do you know how much these damn things are, incidentally? Wait for it. <clears throat> yes, 4 gigabytes is currently £15, which is frankly insane. The 8 gig here is £28, and there's a 16 gig available for £40. Ouch is the simple answer to that. Um, of course, the 4 gig one is frankly too small to really do anything with. The 8 gig still is a little bit low. And I mean, £40 for a bloody 16 gig card, and that's slightly discounted from what I can tell. That's a bit evil and brings into account the whole thought of cost. This is not a cheap unit by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, they're currently going for like £200 if you really shop around. Um, if not, you can pay up to 230 or 240 from one of the more rip-off-y outlets that sell these things. Um, that is quite a lot of money for a handheld device that plays games. But, on the other hand, have a think about what sort of guts this thing's got in it. It's got the same CPU as the iPad 2, same amount of memory, um, considerably better GPU, and other sort of gubbins in it. Uh, you probably are getting a fair bit for your £200. So price-wise, I'm not actually going to throw too much guff at it. I don't think it will help it sell, to say the least, but that I can understand. And I can vaguely understand not having internal storage in it, because, you know, keep costs down, mean you can sell the cards, and yeah, that's not too bad. However... I despise them forever for making another bloody proprietary format and costing everyone a damn fortune on it. It's just evil. Also, battery life isn't great either. Under four hours I got, and that was with the Wi-Fi off and the brightness down. Um, still slightly better than I usually get out of my um, 3DS, but for a handheld device, that's not good. And you can't swap the battery out! And they've taken a leaf out of Apple's book. Oh, that was almost a pun. And, yeah, you can't replace the battery in it. Thanks, lads. This really helps. There's also currently no video out. You can't plug it into your television, although perhaps that's something they can add through that uh, mystery slot at the top. I've got no idea. Anyway, let's stop talking about the damn thing and uh, actually have a go on it, shall we? And here we go. Ooh, look at it starting up. 24th of February, Friday, 1432. Yes, that's when I'm filming this. Hello, everyone. Well, um, something I should mention is that the screen is probably the nicest screen I've ever seen on anything in my entire life. It's fantastic. The blacks actually look black, which is frankly amazing. Oh, it goes to sleep very quickly. Is that something to do with saving battery life, do you think? Now, to get from this mighty date thing to actually using the system, you have to kind of rip a band-aid off the screen, which is all a bit odd. Here we go. Into their really quite bizarrely designed um, interface. It doesn't look like Sony's normal thing at all. They've gone a bit strangely kiddified where everything is painted on Smarties. Don't understand that at all. And you can flip up and down and do all the sort of touchscreen stuff that you would expect these days. Right, let's start off with Welcome Park, which is probably something that tells you more about the machine. I haven't actually tried it yet. Start. Welcome to Welcome Park. Why, thank you. Start. Right, what do these do? Nothing. What? What's going on? What? Just to pause the oh, what? That's just the loading screen. Don't put. Don't have a loading screen that looks like you can touch the icons on it. Come on, people. Oh, it's fading out. Something's going to happen. I hope. Blimey, this is taking a while. Come on. Welcome to Welcome Park. Why? Thank you. That's very kind of you. What's happening here? Oh, somebody's at the door. Oh fuck off! I'm not six years old. <laughs> There's somebody at the door. It's your friend Bob. He's come to tell you about the PSP. Oh, come on. Bloody hell. Are they suddenly aiming this at under fives? I'll tell you what, they can't afford £200 or a handheld unit that'll scratch easy. Party with scary zombie Lego men. This is clearly some sort of Xbox Live party like thing. Can I even be bothered to look at it? Oh, go on then. Start. It'll probably just take ages to load and then disappoint me. Please wait. Still waiting. Watch me wait. Go to the PlayStation Network. Good for you. I'm glad you've got a hobby. I was getting a bit worried about you. Um, bum, bum. Yep, lots of waiting. 
quite enjoy waiting myself. It gives me time to think about all the pain in the universe. Create a party and invite. Oh, yeah, well, that was a waste of time. <laughs> I'm not going to get my friends online and talk to them through a headset on this thing, particularly because I don't have a headset for it. Right. Pressing the PlayStation button takes you back to this weird main menu, and then you can either go whoop, back to the menu here, or you can just delete it from memory by ripping off the band-aid like that. <sighs> it's very therapeutic. Near! Yes, it's Street Pass, only even worse. Um, I've not actually fired it up yet, so I'm not sure what's going to happen. This might be interesting. Near, it says, with lots of footprints. You can use near to share information. I don't want to share information. I don't want people to know what I'm doing, and I have no interest in what other people are doing. I'm not a nosy Evilton. Bloody social networks being forced into everything. Whether you want them or not, I don't know. Right, let's stop moaning and press that and see what happens. Obtaining data for your location. Oh dear. It's going to nuke me from orbit, isn't it? Don't do it, Sody. Location data obtained. That's nice. Share online, Eddie. Nope, I'm not sharing anything. Go away. Oh. Perhaps I should have said yes for that to actually do something. Out and about? What is this? Out and about history. I've had a popularity surge. What? What's going on? I think this is just like the street pass as far as I can ascertain, but... Uh, friends activities? Oh, I can see what Gary Larry's doing. <laughs> now I can switch off that webcam I've got in his bedroom. He's playing Unit 13 demo for the first time. He's playing Motorstorm RC for the first time. And he's playing Wipeout 2048 demo for the first time. He's a lucky boy, isn't he? I haven't got anything as cool as that. Though I could probably download the demos for free if I think about it. Um, discoveries. Ugh. What? Nothing. Why am I even looking at this? God, this is tedious, isn't it? I'm not in slightest bit interested in all this um, half-baked um, sort of social networking guff. I just want to play some games. And yes, that is my PlayStation Network ID. No, do not add me as a friend because I never, ever play on it, so it would be a complete waste of time. Right, friends, not interested. Group messaging, I'm so not interested. Trophies, I'm not interested in the Xbox's achievement systems. So I'm certainly not interested in your half-assed copy of it. Photos, ah, this is more interesting. We get to use the camera. Camera, camera. I don't know why I clicked on the camera and not start. It doesn't appear to have affected anything. Oh look, it's the sofa. Hello sofa. Ooh, here's my hand. Don't know if you can tell, the quality's shite, frankly. Um, just a crappy added on 0.3 megapixel camera, you know, like you get on the iPad 2 and all that guff. Not interested, go away. If I wanted to take low quality pictures of people, I would. I'd probably just kill myself, to be honest with you. Right, PS Store! What can we buy and how much is it? This is going to be frightening, isn't it? Um, start. This is going to take us into the world of costs, and this is not going to be good. We now live in a world where you can get decent games on the iPad, etc. for 69p. And sometimes free. And they're going to be charging a fortune here, aren't they? I can feel it coming. On the plus side, you won't have to wade through the 40,000 crap apps in order to get one decent one like you do on the uh, App Store, but there we go. Little Deviants, lovely. Out now, 20 quid. Everybody's Golf, 30 quid. Mod Nation Races and Road Trip, 30 quid. It's more money, 20 quid, what? It's more money to download the games onto this than it is to buy them from the shop still. You've got to sort that out, folks. <sighs> That's not a good business model. 45 pounds for FIFA football. Tell you what, instead, why don't I just come around and stick my foot up your ass, you cheeky bastards. Right. <sighs> Anyway, let's see what's on offer then. We've got demos PSP. Oh yeah, you can actually buy PSP games through it apparently. That's going to be interesting. PSP games, go for it. How much are they? Far too much, one imagines. Um, I'm going to tell I tell you no lie, GI. Go on. What have we got? Come on, filling quicker on board. Gangs of London, fifteen pounds. Generation of Power, six pounds. G Force from Disney Interactive for four pounds. Well, that sounds cheap. Ghostbusters, £25. Woo! I imagine you could probably get all these much cheaper if you've still got a PSP with a UMD drive somehow. Um, oh, Liberty City Stories was nice, £6.50, yeah. Vice City Stories was slightly nicer, which is why it's 50p more, I imagine. Um, yeah, bloody hell, this is expensive. And of course, um, these are games that you might already own, but you have no way of playing on this new unit, which is a shame. In Japan, they've got a system whereby you can actually, like, put your UMD machines somewhere or send them some sort of code, I can't remember how it works, but uh, they then let you download it onto your PSP. 
But us Westerners get no such thing. We just get to pay £4 so we can play Hannah Montana Rock Out again. Tremendous. Right. Anyway, we don't want old games. We want new games. This is a new thing. Show us a new thing. No, let's go up and actually get some games. I'm going to regret this because I've already seen the prices, haven't I? Army Corps of Hell, £35. The appalling asphalt injection. Asphalt injection being something you desperately don't want from the doctors. Um, £20. I bought it for 15 retrail. I regretted it instantly. I just got it because it was cheap. I'll show you later. It's rubbish. Um, minis, go on. This is something that will perhaps be more handheld friendly. Maybe. And it'll be cheaper. Maybe. Let's look at the latest ones. Mecho Wars. Ooh, £2.39 if you've got a golden thing. That means you're one of those idiots who plays for PlayStation Plus. Um, as far as I can tell, there are only three of those in the world. £4 seems a lot for Mecho Wars. I've got that on the iPhone. I'm pretty sure it was less than a pound. I think it was the 59p price slot as it was. May have even been free. But no, to play it on this, it's £4. Blimey, that's not so good, is it? Hmm, not massively impressed by that. Duck out, duck out. Go away. Don't want to buy things from your expense hole. Oh, hang on. I've just realised I forgot to look at the videos. Top films, please. Again, this is going to be slightly frightening, isn't it? Oh no, now we've got to wait. Multiple times. I like the way it says, please wait, goes away, and then says, please wait again. Like a really annoying checkout assistant. Right, video please. That's what I asked for in the first place, if I recall. Come on. What have we got? Conan, Super 8. Abdu oh, abduction, that was pretty terrible. Even worse than Conan, in fact. So, how much is this? £3.49 to rent. I don't know what the terms are, same as a PlayStation 3, I would assume. Or £12 to own, that's a lot of bloody money, considering you can go out and buy the DVD for a fraction of that. Hmm, it's like they're deliberately trying to put you off using this digital delivery system they've developed, isn't it? I, it's a bit weird, really. I can only assume they are still very good friends with their uh, retail bricks and mortar outlets. Oh well, this is just depressing, let's give up and see what else we've got on offer. Web browser! Ah, now we're talking! Let's go browse that damn web and look at some pictures of cats doing funny things, like um, being elected for Congress, or whatever it is cats do these days. You notice I've already got my web address saved into it for your delectation. <laughs> and it's taking a while to load, but whoa! Comes up pretty quick, really. And you can watch all my YouTube videos on it, isn't that fantastic? Although, hmm, it doesn't scroll down that well. It is a bit buggy, this. Oh, yeah, oh God, no, we're, we're, Oh no, we're back. Oh, hang on! You can't watch my YouTube videos because it doesn't support any sort of HTML or Flash at this time. So it's rather limited. Also, it's as buggy as all heck at the moment. So basically the browser's rubbish, which is a real shame, frankly, because the screen's high enough resolution for you to sort of look at whole web pages across it, so that is a real shame. But it's only software, I suppose they can update it in the future, so... Uh don't write them off just yet. Wait until next weekend at least. What we got down here? Listen to music. No thanks. It's too big to have in your pocket for that. Videos. Well, I suppose you could watch videos on it if you're on the train, but these days you've probably got something with a bigger screen, like a, some sort of tablet you could watch them on, maybe? I don't know. If you're not carrying that with you, this could be useful. And yes, you do have to convert them to a specific format before it will play them. Remote play! Now this is interesting. Uh, you've got some PS3 connectivity going on, basically. Um... The way it works is I'm not entirely sure. Frankly, no games really seem to support it much at the moment. But what is interesting is you can use this as a controller for the uh, PS3, which sounds like an absolutely pointless novelty. Uh, but there is some thinking behind it, because, of course, what is the main selling point of the Wii U? Nintendo's upcoming console. Answer, it has a bloody great controller with a screen in the middle. So anything that can do that can be copied on this, you see. Uh, a bit of future-proofing from the Sony bods there. Very expensive way to do it, though, because you need a PS3 and a uh, PS Vita here in order for it to work. So, hmm, perhaps that's not entirely fantastic. But hey, we like a bit of future-proofing. Oh, can I just mention, by the way, it was a real pain in the arse to set the thing up out of the box. Because it went along, asked me if I already had a um, PlayStation Network account, so I said yes, because I do. And then it said a system update is required, and okay, but then it wouldn't let me proceed. You had to go back. So when you go back, it then asks you again, do you have a PlayStation Network account? So you say yes, and then it says an update is required, but won't let you update. And the only way to get past it was to set up a trial account for the PlayStation Network. Then it would upload the update. Then you could put in your proper one. 
That was really weird and strangely off-putting for something brand new out of the box. A very bad design and very, very strange. It's like they sort of forced that bit out at the last minute and didn't have time to fix it. Anyway, what else have we got going on? Um, maps. It's just Google Maps that loads a bit slowly, to be brutally honest with you. Let's have a quick look. Start. Please wait. Yeah, getting quite used to that. Yeah, still waiting. Yeah, a lot, a lot of waiting going on. Good job, I'm a patient man, isn't it? With nothing better to do. And here we are. And now we can see a map of absolutely nowhere. Oh, here we are. It's the top of the Norwich Castle Museum, which looks like some sort of futuristic power plant, but uh, is actually a medieval castle. And you can zoom out a bit and then wait ages for it to load in. I've got no idea why it takes so long. I mean, the connection seems pretty quick. And things like the iPhone do it almost instantly. Very strange. Anyway, I don't particularly care about that. It's a nice little extra, but um, not something I desperately need. Content manager, you can guess what that is. Settings, you can guess what those are. Oh, right, I'm going to put that down now because my arms are tired. Anything else I've forgotten to mention? Um, no, we've gone through pretty much everything there, I think. Uh, browser's a bit crap. Yeah, UI design looks a bit kiddy and strange. Um, but it all seems to work properly, I suppose. Um, it's just the price of the games, really, is a bit of a kick in the pants, to be brutally honest. I mean, £45 for bloody fee to FIFA for a handheld. That's absolutely terrifying. I paid £25 for Skyrim on release. You know, I'm not going to be paying 45 quid for a handheld football game, am I? Especially when you can get something remarkably similar on the old iPad for a fraction of that. Oh, wait, the iPad doesn't have any controls. Right, anyway... Shall we have a look at some games? And I'll warn you now, due to annoying circumstances, I couldn't get any of the impressive or good ones. So yes, we're going to have to have a look at Asphalt Injection, but I promise to have something less rubbish on first. So, first, let's have a look at the Reality Fighters. Yes, that's what I said. Reality Fighters demo, which inexplicably features Mr. Miyagi from the original um, Karate Kid films. Uh, not the original actor, Pat Morita, because I believe he is dead and therefore unavailable for work at the moment. Um, this is just basically a gimmicky thing and quite how they dared to charge 20 quid for it, I have no idea. But um, it's like a very simple 3D fighting game, except it projects it onto the background of what the camera sees using the old augmented reality cards, of which I have one set up. OK, touch to start. Can I press a button? No, you do have to touch. That's kind of annoying. Right, single player then, as it's only the demo. There's only a couple of things available. I've made a character which as vaguely has my face, and I think you have to fight a zombie because, you know, demo, no real characters. There I am. That's me. That's kind of not me. That's a bit frightening. Let's fight the... Oh, no, 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 that one. Oh, yes. Sorry, I was being too quick. Right, press the green tick. Tap an enemy. We can go against the boxer, who is less interesting because he's the same fighting style I do, or weird Chinese zombie bloke Tonton. Yeah, that'll do. He reminds me of a Tonton. I want the augmented reality background. There's no point in anything else, is there? Okay, that's the most frightening thing I've ever seen. I'm mostly talking about my own face. Reality fighters! Place the marker or press X to change the characters. I have placed the marker. Is it realising it? I don't know. Yay, there we are. And here we are, the first fight on the sofa. Pity you have to keep the card on there, really, because uh, that makes things a whole lot uh, less interesting. Very rarely do people fight over a big card. Oh, I can only punch. That'll be, because I'm a boxer. Can I do a dragon punch or something? Hmm, not that I seem to be able to pull off. Oh, yes, there we are, that was something. Ooh, let's do the fatty punch again, yay. You'll notice, of course, when you move it around, um, yes, it moves kind of the camera angle, which actually works better than you think. Oh, God, what's going on there? I'm dragged to his uh, subterranean love hole. That's never good. I'm just going to repeatedly do the same special move, because I can't really see what I'm doing, because I'm looking for the viewfinder. Uh, ah! Eat that, zombie bloke. Punchy, punchy. Yes, I'm just flailing like somebody playing Tekken for the first time. Or your mum playing FIFA football. Come on! Punch, punch, kick, punch. No, it's just punches, isn't it? I'm a boxer. Oh, come on. Bored now. There! I win. Oh, no, I don't. Oh, for crying out loud. I'm determined to finish this damn fight. Time up! Yay! Look at that! I look like a freak. 
also in this game. Right, well that's Reality Fighters. Yeah, not really worth 20 quid, but it's a bit of a laugh, and it's got very deep customization options. Not in the demo, because they only give you one part to actually play with, but um, that's probably something to keep the kids amused, maybe, if you can steal it from a shop. I can't help feeling that the only real people fighting reality are Sony's management with some of these pricings, but there we go. Anyway, time for a real game, because we're going to avoid cliff diving, which is a very... Um, well, to be honest, it's a very iPhone-y type game. Sort of very casual thing where you just tap a button occasionally in order to uh, hit the right angle. A bit like the old, um, what was that game where the Yeti hit a penguin with a stick? Uh, very similar to that, really. But, um, yeah, it's free, so hey, let's not complain. Tell you what, as an added bonus, I'll show you the PS Vita game cards. They look like this, like a slightly smaller SD card, and they slot in the top. That was worthwhile, wasn't it? So, Asphalt Injection, yes, it's one of those games that always seems to rear its head around the launch of a new product. Uh, it's basically an old iPhone game, I believe, from Gameloft, and they keep sort of spewing it out for new consoles, and it's always, at very best, a poor copy of Ridge Racer. And this version is no damn exception, go on, let me spend along on it. Free race, let me drive my Mini around Los Angeles, go on. Hopefully it's easy enough that I won't have to steer or brake very much, because I can't really see what I'm doing through the viewfinder. Oh dear, bloody asphalt, eh? But it's always the cheapest launch game, you see. That's where they're coming from, isn't it? We can sell some copies if we make it cheaper than everything else, so when the kids buy their expensive new console, they can still actually afford a game, but Dad's only going to stretch to us. And then nobody's going to be very impressed, and my god, this takes a long time to load. It took about 15 seconds to start from putting the cartridge in as well. It's a lot of loading for a cartridge-based system. And I'm going to talk over this woman, because she annoys me. Come on, then. Ready. Steady. Oh, DeLorean. Very nice. Come on, then. <gasps> so excited. I'm bored now. Right. Here we go. Brum, brum, brum. There's some sort of turbo going on, as you can see. That helps you go quicker. There. I'm not getting too technical for you, am I? Vroom, vroom. Man, this is difficult through a viewfinder. Um, yeah, you can pick up extra turbo things and look. Cargo broom fast now. This is a very, very pedestrian racing game. These, like these asphalt things always are. The handling's weak. Um, I don't know if you hear the car engine, but it's ridiculously bad. It sounds like an old sewing machine. And it's all just like Ridge Racer, only not as good. Except, disappointingly, actually, Ridge Racer for the Vita is pretty bad as well. Um, it's sort of an empty shell of a game with almost no content. If you want an actual racing game, you're better off with uh, Modern Nation Racers or, by far recommended, Wipeout 2048, which I got to play earlier but I haven't got at the minute. Now, in the continuation of a worrying trend, here's another Gameloft title that's originally from iOS, and appears to star Nick Cage, looking at the picture there. Yes, Dungeon Hunter Alliance. It's a game I've played on the iPad, and to be honest, the graphics on it weren't very good even for the iPad at the time. Wow, this takes a while to load by the looks of it. Anyway, yes, this comes to the Vita via the PlayStation Network, for originally this was a game on PS3, which you could download like... But now you can buy it on a cartridge and put it in. And yes, the Vita version is considerably more expensive. Thanks, lads. Right, press X to continue story. Nice and go. I've played this before and I didn't like it. There we are, I've given away the ending. Here's my character, Plibler, which is a fine name, and I'll kill any man who disagrees. Right, basically, I don't know if you've played Diablo, but imagine Diablo 2 only at about four times less fun. Welcome to this game! Oh wait, it's loading again. You know, I could have sworn this game came on a bloody cartridge! Why don't I just write down the ones and zeros and type them in later? That would probably load quicker. Come on. Bloody hell. Dum-de-dum-de-dum. -dum. Nice weather we're having at the moment, isn't it? Especially considering the time of year. Yes. Right, here we go. Well, it's gone right back to the start, I think! Bloody hell! That's not good. Mind you, I didn't play it very much because I played it before and I didn't like it. And look, it's telling me tutorials. To oh, bugger off. You can swing your axe and do a special thing, which in this case is just swinging the axe slightly differently with a funny noise. 
run around with the analog nah, blah, blah blah blah. The graphics are much nicer than the iPad version, pretty much the same as the PS3 one, but it's still not a great looking game. You ain't going to impress anyone with this. Frankly, you would probably impress people more with bloody asphalt. The game that is not asphalt itself, that would be a really stupid thing to cover your Vita in. Right, run around, oh look, it's a chest, press the bumper button, oh look, there's some guff on the floor, let's be... You know how this works, this just isn't really a very good version of it. Dungeon crawling has never been quite this tedious. If you want a good dungeon crawler, um, but have played Diablo, I strongly recommend Torchlight for, um, I think it's on... Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is on Xbox Live these days, but uh, it's also available on PC for a very small amount of money and is excellent. Unlike this. Have I said that enough? Oh, look, it's some goblins. Perhaps I should tap a button near them. Yeah, they're dead now. This is really quite dull. And I'll tell you what I find absolutely inexcusable, so much so that I wonder if there's an option I've missed. Right? There's a lot of inventory management in these sorts of games, as well you know. Continue. Hang on. There we are. Right. So if you want to change what he's wearing, you have to go across to this screen with your buttons and go down, blah, 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 equip. And it's all very awkward because it's based on the PS3's um, system, which, of course, you've only got the controller. But you've got a bloody touch screen here. Why didn't it use the system from the iPad, which was far, far easier? Why have you restricted us to such a banal and pointless port? You people are evil. Evil, I tell you. Close. The only interesting point you can do, actually, is you can move the fairy. Yes, he's got a fairy that goes around him. Yes, they've played Zelda. Um, by moving the touch screen on the back. Woo, look. Woo. Or alternatively, you can use the other analog stick, which does the same thing, but slightly more accurately. Ugh, this game isn't very good. Let's play one that is. Oh hell yeah, I love me some Virtua Tennis. Big fan since the uh, first Virtua Tennis game on Dreamcast, which is also the last one I really played properly because they're all very similar. Right, tennis, tennis. This is basically the PS3 version only with the addition of some really shitey mini games, which we're not even gonna cover because they're boring. Exhibition match, go on. You'll be pleased to hear this one looks vaguely impressive unlike the other games I've brought up. Very bad, if only I could have got hold of a copy of Uncharted. But I couldn't. I'd have had to have paid a lot of money, but I don't have because I've spent it all in Poundland. Go on, let's be Serena Williams. No, that's the other one. V Williams. Vanessa Williams? Veronica Williams? Vera Williams? Yes, Vera. That's a really popular name amongst Americans at the moment, isn't it? Um, versus F. Gonzalez. Freddy? No idea. Federer? Ah, there's Andy Murray. Always play against Andy Murray. He can't beat anyone in real life, so he probably won't beat you in the game either. Right, come on then. Loading. Oh dear. Yeah, it gives you some play tips in order to distract you from the loading, although it actually loads quicker than the other games. I'm the server, and I will lose terribly, because playing this for a viewfinder is very difficult. You will notice, if you have played the PS3 version, that this is remarkably similar. Hello, I'm Andy Murray. Ooh, Williams is going to serve. I think she might play tennis as well. Ready? Go! Woo! Oh. <clears throat> well, as you can tell, I'm going to lose this really badly. Oh my god, shiny zombie, uncanny valley. Oh, it's scary, that. That's not the Vita's fault. Oh, oh yeah, return a ball. You don't see much of that. Ooh. And back, and go on, go on. Oh. He's super powered. Oh, I've missed it. I'm going to lose badly. But as you can see, this is by far more impressive than the other games. It's also a very good game. Probably not worth the amount they're selling it for, but by far the cream of my frankly very poor PS Vita launch lineup crop. And I'll tell you what, though, the launch lineup for the old Vita has been far better than any console in recent memory, really. Launches have all turned a bit crap recently, with uh, usually just Ubisoft's. Well, you know what it's like. Basically, it's asphalt and nothing else, isn't it? But you've actually got some decent games around now. You've got Uncharted and, you know, Virtua Tennis there and various other things, meaning you can buy one on the day of release and actually play something that doesn't make you wish you'd bought a hat instead. So, I suppose I've got to reach some kind of conclusion, even though it's effectively pointless for a brand new device such as this, because all you can say is, well, it seems good, but uh, it hasn't better dimmed the software yet, so we don't know what it's going to be like, I suppose, if you've got the money and you want one, buy one. Which can sum up almost any review of a new device. But anyway, let's ignore all that and talk about it anyway. 
Basically, the games are great. I mean, it's got plenty of grunt for games, and more so, and it's going to become more and more impressive as time wears on. Um, it offers experiences which a mobile platform simply cannot, or at least does not at the moment. You know, things like controls and proper deep games, although, of course, if you've actually got enough downtime on a train to play a game properly or not, is entirely your affair. Um, the lack of internal storage is an irritant purely because of the massive price of their horrifying proprietary bloody memory cards, which is pure evil. Um, battery life's crap, that's not good. The browser's crap, that's also not good. Um, although the browser can, of course, be increased, the battery life never will be. Um, really, the cost is the big thing. I mean, it's pricey for a handheld machine, but as I say, compare it to the cost of an iPad 2, and Christ, isn't an iPhone 4S like £500? You know, it's a lot cheaper than that. But then, you've got to figure in the cost of the cards, and then the monstrous cost of the games which are frankly terrifying in today's mobile market, and may well be the nail in the coffin for this, who can say? I hope it finds a niche, because I like the idea of there being proper handheld gaming devices knocking around, even if I'm not going to use them myself. It uh, reminds me of a simpler and better time. Well, it wasn't really better, it's just that I didn't have to pay bills back then. But yeah, I hope it kind of succeeds in its own way, but um, the odds are up in the air. It's a funny old market at the moment, what with economic downturns everywhere and mobile platforms doing weird things, and I'm not even going to attempt to predict the future. The one big downside of it for me, actually, is that it does kind of smack of desperation. It's like they've just seen, that was successful on the Wii, nick that bit and put it in, nick that bit and put it in, nick that bit and put it in. No, don't just have one touch screen, have two, you know. Even down to the fact that the music in the background of the weird Smarties interface sounds like the music that plays in the background of the Wii and the 3DS. Um, I don't know if just throwing loads of stuff at the wall and hoping some of its sticks will work. Perhaps they should just, you know, have concentrated on purely the gaming aspects and perhaps dropped the price of them a bit. Who can say? So, I think it's a lovely unit, and I'll be a little sad when I now go up to the city and sell it in order to recoup the cost of this review. But I look forward to a time in about a year or so when they've massively dropped in price and there are loads of games you can pick up cheap. That's when I'll be getting one again, I think. And what if they manage to hack it and install emulators? No, mustn't think like that. But what if they do? No, mustn't think like that. Pointless. I've got the open Pandora that does all that. But think what this could emulate. Think how powerful it is. No! Naughty! Oh, I just can't help myself.